The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and thank you for joining us for RTT's third webinar with Car Design News. My name is Abel Sampson and I'm the publisher of Car Design News. As you know, this webinar will focus on the virtual product development process. With us we have experts Jan Bogustein, Senior Engineering Consultant, and Boris Koller, Product Manager, who will provide comprehensive insights into the different techniques for conducting efficient design and engineering reviews. Before we start, I would like to remind all of you in attendance to draft some questions, which Jan and Boris will answer during the Q&A session following their presentations. Please ask these questions by typing them into the box in the lower right-hand side of your screen. If you should happen to experience any technical issues during this session, please also type these into the Q&A box and our team will do their best to sort these out for you. If you're using a PC, be sure to check that the audio is not in mute mode. We hope you will find the webinar stimulating and informative. I'll now hand it over to Jan and Boris to begin their presentation. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Hi all, Boris is here. Hello, this is Jan Bodenstein. Hello everybody. Today we want to show you how design and engineering reviews can be carried out by using high-end visualization technology. We will present you several use scenarios which can be part of such um, reviews. Good to know is for you that these kind of review sessions may take place in front of a single desktop monitor but normally are carried out on a power wall or an immersive scenario, what we later on will explain in more detail. So you see here three sections we want to present today. We give you an overview how such design reviews can be looked like and what can be done with engineering reviews. And later on, and this is suitable for both uh, use cases, how an immersive scenario could look like. For the whole presentation, we do a live demo here with a um, live running uh, software. The software is RTT Delta Gen release 9.61. And uh, for the geometry, the model will be an Audi R8. Uh, we have pre prepared for this demo. At first, uh, I want to give you a short introduction. What is the background of such reviews? Um, if you compare with physical prototypes used for um, development in engineering uh, with new uh, high-end high visualization software, you can um, base these um, prototyping phases on base of a 3D real-time model. And with that real-time model, you can cover several phases through your engineering process, we call that virtual prototyping. You can cover several use cases here uh, visible on that screen. Um, these are use cases from design reviews, especially if you look at styling or color and trim or light design, um, as well as engineering reviews. For instance, ergonomic uh, analysis or um, visualization of simulation results. On top of that, if we leave now the area of virtual prototyping and your product is ready on the market, then such technology uh, can be a very good help for virtual marketing and sales. But this now is not the topic of this uh, webinar. We will now have a closer look to the use cases of virtual prototyping. Now I hand over to Jan, uh, running the demo and explaining how this could look like. Okay. Um, we will start with uh, the uh, issues related to design review and as Boris already uh, explained, we would like to show um, the use cases related to design and engineering reviews on an Audi R8 model. This Audi R8 model has already uh, run the whole, um, whole preparation process, which means structuring of the uh, geometry, for example, material assignment, shadow calculation, creation of variants and animations and so on. But this has all been uh, uh, content of the last uh, preview, uh, no, preview webinar with uh, car design news. Okay. <clears throat> um, for design review, um, the most, one of the most important um, topics is the, um, the verification of surface molding, which means um, do the surfaces 
are the surfaces continuous, um, are the transitions from one part to another matching each other, and are the radii matching each other. This is usually, um, usually um, reviewed with a neutral reflection and illumination, like we see in the uh, example here. <coughs> so, when the uh, turntable um, animation stops, we can go into detail and have a closer look at the uh, front bumper. The front bumper, there's one very um, remarkable line, this is the edge that has been modeled right here and if we move the camera a bit up and down, we see how the light changes at this certain edge. Now to get rid of the uh, maybe distracting reflection and, and textures, we can also disable these and have a clear look only on the geometry. Now going to the back of the car, there are two parts, the side blade and the rear uh, fender, um, which also need to match exactly to each other because there's this edge running from the front to the back. Okay. <clears throat> One of the um, most advantages um, of virtual models uh, compared to virtual proto uh, compared to physical prototypes is that the virtual model is able to extend the capabilities of the physical prototype, which means, for example, I'm able to uh, review different colors, different body colors on the model, um, or even review different color combinations. For example, for the side plate, if I make the side plate uh, brighter, then of course the car needs to be uh, much darker to get a good contrast. Another issue is <coughs> are um, different proposals for certain shapes in the model. So if uh, there are maybe two different design um, design proposals for the side mirror, for example, then I'm able to switch them very quickly. Or in our example right here, um, we have different proposals for the wheels and I'm able to um, switch them very quickly and have a good comparison between these geometry types. Um, <clears throat> if I would like to um, view a whole body concept, it's also possible to switch multiple um, parts at one time. In our example, I can switch between the 10-cylinder uh, Audi R8 and the standard Audi R8. And we see the front grille, the side grille, and the, the, um, the blade is changing at one time. <coughs> Usually, mm, these design reviews are viewed from um, specific cameras. This is basically this is uh, a three-quarter quant front view, a side view, and a three-quarter uh, rear view. But as we do have a um, virtual model in real time here, it is still possible to intervene um, in this um, yeah, during a presentation. If somebody would like to uh, view the model from behind, more behind, or maybe more from the side. It's absolutely no problem because we do have a, a real-time model here. <coughs> okay, mm, to stage the the model in an appropriate way, it's always a good idea to create a kind of design flight, which um, gives the designer the ability to point out certain styling features um, that he wants to show. In addition, also some animations like uh, for the rear hood or for the rear wing can be created um, to demonstrate maybe technical concepts, so let's say uh, technical designs. Let's shut them again. Okay. And then of course um, animations are also always good to um, make the presentation more attractive. For example, I can click on my uh, front wheel here to, to turn it um, a bit, this side. And um, animations are in any way very good for uh, good transitions. So if we are going to the interior now, start an interior flight. We don't have a, a hard cut to the interior, but a very smooth 
um, transition to the interior. And again, uh, similar to the exterior review, it's also possible to change any um, geometrical details in the interior, like this, the steering wheel, sports steering wheel, and basic steering wheel, or the different seat proposals, like sports seats or uh, basic seats. But um, usually, um, the, the most discussed issues in, in the interior are color and trim questions. So, for example, what's happening if I um, <clears throat> if I color different parts in, in another way, like this, or maybe just um, oh, sorry. Okay, so um, yeah, like this. So um, if I color maybe the, the floor in a, in a brighter way or the seat in a brighter way or these door side panels in a brighter way, um, I, I have a very, very quick um, review of these changes. Or again, I can change these uh, trim colors and can check if they are matching to my um, whole color concept in the, in the interior. <coughs> okay. Another very interesting use case is to uh, simulate very in, in a very early design phase um, multimedia interfaces. So in our example here, we do have an interactive application integrated for the um, navigation screen or multimedia screen in the Audi model. I just switched it on and now I can change between the uh, compact disc mode, the navigation screen, or maybe the uh, radio screen. And that's all possible just on a, on a virtual prototype. In this example, Jan is uh, picking with the mouse cursor onto the appropriate um, geometry elements to activate um, the flash UI. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Boris. Um, okay, so let's again go to the exterior. You see this, the, the door is still open because I, I opened it. Um, up to now, we, all the, the, the reviews we have done have been um, viewed in a neutral environment, which is, which is quite fine for, for certain applications. Um, but of course, if I would like to check my, my design a model in different moods or different um, exterior or exterior but environmental situations it's also possible or it's also a very very uh, big advantage of the virtual model to easily put it into different um, settings so for example we have the neutral here and then we can just twi switch to get a sunset situation or switch again to get a um, city situation especially a, a night situation is always very interesting and if I turn around the car now, we see that um, the car is now set into a completely different mood. It's not only the environment um, which has been switched, also the reflection on the body um, has been changed automatically while changing the environment here. Correct. We want to show you another possibility how to control the reflections on a body. You see here a snapshot of a plugin you can run with uh, Delta Chain. It's a plugin of HDR Light Studio software. Um, in real time now you can control. Here you see it on the um, on the um, right uh, bottom uh, corner of that of that snapshot. You can control light situations, and in real time you see uh, um, the feedback in the Delta Chain viewer window, a very fast uh, possibility to control the, um, the reflections um, on, uh, on models for a better um, assessment um, of, the, of the shapes of a, of a car. Okay, and um, now let's say we are in a presentation, in a design review presentation, and um, there might be some remarks on the model on the styling, on the color, or whatever, um, you might want to place uh, some kind of virtual post-its on the car to, um, to save these information. This is uh, possible. Um, in Delgen, they are called um, 
three D nodes. However, so let's say somebody says mm, the the headlights are too evil. So make headlights more not more more friendly. Then we do have this um, this uh, virtual post-it right here. Um, can place a couple of, uh, of different of these post-its, um, save them, and after the presentation we can do all the work afterwards. So um, we still we, we save all the um, all the comments that have been come up in the presentation. Okay. <clears throat> now, if you um, already have your your virtual model, it's very uh, easy and, and and simple to generate content out of this. Let's say for uh, documentation purposes, or if somebody wants to use it in um, in any PowerPoint, then you can put out maybe a single images, image series, movies, or even QuickTime VR, which is a kind of uh, fake 3D, uh, yeah, 3D uh, viewer. Okay, so this was um, the information so far. We would like to show you uh, related to design review and now Boris will introduce the um, engineering review. We just covered the um, upper left side on virtual prototyping the design reviews. You um, remember here HMI design, light design, styling, what we just covered and now we have will have a closer look um, on uh, engineering review topics like uh, simulation um, and ergonomics uh, and others. Okay, so let's get back to the th real 3D scene, which is, of course, uh, most interesting. Um, <clears throat> if you already have your data model available, it is um, very easy to do next to, uh, besides uh, design review, design related uh, topics, it's easy to do um, engineering related analysis. So, for example, um, you can do quick and easy measurements on your model. So, let's do it. Um, in this example, so I open up the, um, not the measure course, this is the wrong one. I want to do measurements and then go to, go a bit closer to the car and let's say we want to measure the distance between this corner and this corner. So do a point to point measurement, click here and click there and then Deltagen shows me the distance, it is uh, 258 millimeters. Or maybe if we want to know the distance between those two parking sensor, um, parking sensors. So click this object and this object, and then the, the minimum distance is 453 uh, millimeters. And so it's possible to do very quick and easy uh, measurements while a presentation or on the already existing virtual model. <coughs> besides, besides these uh, measurements. It's also interesting to do um, classic sections. So I open up the section um, tool right here. There's already one section uh, plane um, prepared. Um, and you see this cuts the, the car in two halves. Um, so I'm able to have a very good overview of the uh, side profile of the car. And now we want to see um, the, the classic two-dimensional section. And it's also possible when I open the so-called pick section viewer in this software, um, zoom to the front, and now I can directly or interactively move the three-dimensional cut plane and directly see the result in the uh, section viewer, in the section camera. Okay, so... Mm. The next topic is um, related to fluid dynamic simulation. We now have seen uh, examples for um, analysis directly in the already existing car, but uh, what is if we would like to combine the virtual um, visual model with uh, simulation data based on this model? An example for this, for this is um, the, the fluid dynamics visualization. And there we do not um, simulate any mm, fluid data or simulation data, but we are able to 
to show them in the software. And we are able to show uh, different uh, attributes. For example, in this example, we see um, the, the pressure um, on top of the car uh, visualized in a, cut in, a, in, a, in a section plane. The, the pressure on the front is quite heavy or quite big. The, the pressure on the top of the uh, car is, is very low. Um, and it's also possible to, to visualize the, the speed of the airstream moving around the car with these uh, streamlines, so-called streamlines. Um, and the, the actual speed of the streamlines is related to the, the speed of the airstream. And the, the big advantage of this, um, yeah, this, of this is um, to create a discussion base between the engineers and uh, the, the aerodynamic engineers and the designers because there's always a big clash between both and so they are uh, on, a, on the same um, discussion base and, and decisions um, can be speed up a lot. Okay. Now we will show you some examples um, carrying out some ergonomic analysis. Um, with this solution, we uh, um, have a partnership with uh, um, human solution software RAMSYS. RAMSYS is actually a standalone software which is quite established and uh, worldwide used for economic analysis. What we have done here is a, a plug-in in the software, so it makes it possible to run economic analysis in a high-end visualization model. And, um, in the background, the, um, ana the analysis and the calculations of such uh, human ergonomics are carried out and uh, um, transferred to the delta chain, so we are just caring about the visualization and the interaction by the user. Okay, and we already have a Ramses model prepared in this car. I open up the, uh, the UI for this Ramses model, um, make him visible. There he is, and then first of all, I am able to run through different uh, postures that I have uh, set up up front um, to just show uh, during the presentation um, how the the actual um, yeah, posture of this model would be. If I already have my Ramses model um, prepared in a certain um, yeah, seating position, then it's very easy to do um, different reachability analysis. For example, I can check if my Ramses model is able to um, to reach this radio here. Of course he is, no problem. But is he also able to to reach the glove box? Uh, no, it's not possible because in this case his uh, um, yeah, freedom is too small. I can um, create, based on these um, reachability analysis, I can create um, different reachability volumes that I have prepared right here and these are showing the radius where the, the virtual human model is able to uh, put his finger. Mm, this is for example very interesting when I am comparing a woman or a male model or a, Euro a European human or, or, a, or an Asian human. Um, yes, and so I have a very good comparison on that. You can use several databases. Um, there are a lot of databases of measured uh, humans um, for different markets, um, if it is Asia or parts of Europe or American areas. So for each area, um, there are several databases that you really can go sure uh, um, that uh, you, uh, um, you do ergonomic analysis with the right database. Um, you can switch, of course, um, among several percentiles, 5 percentile woman, uh, 50 percentile uh, men, or 95 percentile men, so up to the use case what you want to have analyzed. Sorry, need to switch the microphone on, of course. <laughs> okay, next thing we want to show you is the, the view analysis. Um, where the first one is uh, uh, the, the view cone that I just switched on. And with that, I, am, I can really see um, the area that the, the Ramses model is covering. 
So um, if I change the, the head position now, you can see how the view cone changes accordingly. But more interesting is if I create a new camera right here and um, pin that camera to the Ramses head with this function here. And then in the second camera, I see, I directly see everything that my Ramses, my, my human Ramses model sees right now. To have a good overview from the outside, um, which areas um, are visible for the Ramses model, there are the, the so-called view shadows, which I switch on now. Let's say it, take it for the middle eye. And um, again, moving the head of the Ramses, you see how the, the yellow area changes. And if we go onto the um, um, instrument panel right here, we see that a certain part is covered by the steering wheel. Now if I change the, the geometry of the, the, the geometry of the steering wheel, oh, I need to switch that off, um, you see that the, the masked out parts are changing as well. Similar um, use, uh, um, use case is moving the steering wheel to different positions to fit the, the human needs. It's also changing the um, occluded areas here. Another very interesting use case is if we go to the outside and change the surrounding again to our city surrounding. And then we can directly see um, which areas are um, occluded by the, by the car. So if I move the head to the right, you see that these areas right here are occluded by the A-pillar and the, the interior mirror. So let's say if there's maybe a woman with, his, with her child, then it is possible that the, the human model in the uh, car is not able to see her. Okay, so let's get back to the studio and um, of course into the interior. And now of course it's very interesting to see how good the feeling or how, how comfortable the uh, Ramses model is feeling in his position. Therefore, there's a feature called NASA Analysis. If we check the whole body and um, activate the, the joints the, to, to see the joints, you see that more or less all the joints are green, which means he's feeling quite comfortable. If we are going into another pose, for example, the, when he tries to open up the glove box, then you see he needs to stretch himself a bit and um, some of the uh, joints are getting uh, more and more darker, which means then he's not feeling that comfortable. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, what we want to show you now is um, the immersive scenario. Therefore, because this is no desktop solution, um, we prepared uh, a movie to show that, which we will play now. Okay, movie still uh, takes a couple of time to load, um, so I start my, my uh, speaking. <laughs> um, most of the use cases we described so far require uh, a one-to-one -one scale and a volumetric projection, which means um, they need a true life scale to get the uh, observer completely immersed and to enable his decision-making process. Um, therefore, we would need uh, a cave or power wall scenario um, with stereoscopic projection and a tracking system. The movie we would like to show you in the next couple of seconds, hopefully, um, shows uh, some examples of use cases that can be done in an immersive environment. Um, the cave we, we are showing in this movie is, is a quite small one quite small-scale one with only two sides, um, but uh, at least it can show the principle.
Okay. To hurry up a bit, I will skip uh, the the first couple of minutes, um, which was the the introduction part of the of the movie. You see the the projection systems here, and now we get to the point. Um, when being in, a, in an immersive scenario, there are different types of navigating around. The first one we are showing here is the fly mode, where you are able to freely navigate around in the scene. The second one we'll see here is the walk mode, and the walk mode really simulates the behavior when walking around a real model. So there's no need to navigate around with using such a tracking device, only walking around, um, go up and downwards as you see here. This is enough um, to examine uh, your model. Right. And with this tracked, uh, tracked head, you really see in one-to-one -one scale uh, the, the, the object and a really good uh, feeling of the extent of this uh, geometry. Of course, um, similar to the desktop uh, solution, it's also possible to change variations of geometry, change variations of um, um, colors or materials, and again, um, moving around the vehicle to uh, review these changes. The interactions in the scene are done with a, a tracked device, an interaction device, um, which um, is visualized with a kind of pick ray in the scene. You see this, uh, this red line there, and whenever I click with this red um, pick ray in the scene, uh, certain actions are triggered. Like, for example, in this case, the, the, the engine cover and the, the rear uh, wing are activated. Now as he open, has opened up the, uh, the engine cover, he flies into the engine cover, and what you see now is the real observer view, which means this is the view that the, uh, that the user actually sees, because now we uh, put the camera directly in, in front of the uh, tracking uh, glasses. Um, you get a really good feeling of uh, how the, um, the virtual geometry is looking like. Again, similar to desktop mode, it's also possible to review the uh, fluid dynamics um, to get a, a better impression of the actual physical scale. Getting into the interior, um, there are also many common use cases, but uh, basically it's all about um, view and ergonomic analysis. So in this example, we uh, have a seat bug in front of the, the cave, um, which matches exactly the, uh, the, the virtual car. And so when we are seated in the seat bug, um, we really see all the uh, items, elements, geometries that we would see in the real car as well. And so we can have a very good impression on, on the uh, actual model, on the actual car interior, and are able to really decision making. In the scene it's also possible to track uh, other things uh, besides the head. In this example it's a, a small pen and this pen can also be used for uh, triggering interactions in the scene, for example animations or um, variations as well. Another very important and interesting uh, issue is that we are able to simulate different uh, percentiles um, in the virtual scene. So we can switch, quickly switch between a medium driver, a tall driver, and a small driver to check what this person um, actually sees. Of course, this is a bit exaggerated, but you see very good uh, the different uh, view positions. Again, similar to desktop, uh, it's also possible to do to use uh, the MMI interfaces um, in the uh, immersive environment uh, to control them. Okay, of course, um, 
a uh, studio environment does not make much sense for immersive um, studies. So it's also possible to to switch the environmental situation while using the uh, the seat bug. For example, I can switch to the city environment again and um, look around if I see any traffic lights or um, parking cars or um, any uh, person standing around. In this example, we have a, a good impression of the inside mirror where a test person was walking around uh, and in the mirror we are able to uh, see if this person is visible through the mirror. Okay. Um, one of the um, one of the very important um, um, review topics in the interior are uh, windshield reflections, and there um, the the designers need to check if their design elements, for example, these uh, trim elements here, are um, ops, op, are um, um, yeah distracting the view to important um, things like the side mirror or the main viewing area. Um, and this is possible using an advanced rendering method called ray tracing, which really simulates the, the reflection in the windshield. Okay. And um, mentioning the um, tracked object, it's also possible to use tracked object for collision detection. So I'm able to check if these uh, elements are fitting into their um, respective areas or into the cup holder, for example. Okay, so that was the movie so far. We hope we were able to, to give you a good feeling about the various um, test scenarios in the immersive environment. So before I coming to the conclusion, I want to ask you to type in your questions into the uh, panel so that uh, we can answer them later in the uh, Q&A session. Um, so, short summary, what are the benefits now from virtual design reviews? So, virtual design and engineering review shortens, of course, the development process and time to market because it is supported by virtual prototype and reduces the need for costly physical prototypes. Uh, and and uh, with that, uh, with using a high-end visualization, of course, it promotes the cost, the, the, uh, the cost departmental decision making, brings several departments in front of a single model to discuss uh, um, the prototype and to make decisions. And um, with the immersive setup, as we have seen here now in the movie, it uh, allows, uh, as we call it, true life product experience for a better impression of the, of the product. And uh, on top of that, of course, on, only not this, but uh, the setup itself uh, could be flexible. And uh, even if, uh, um, if you use a desktop PowerWall, CAFE, or whatever, you can use the same database to, uh, um, to run your design engineering reviews. Um, further, uh, on top of that, you can, uh, the, the efficiency for such processes can be increased, for instance, by tight PDM connections um, for having continuously your data um, up to date uh, or you use uh, several automatisms uh, um, which can be provided for automatic data preparation and scene building. This would be, uh, this would make the, the, uh, the review process um, even more efficient um, for, for, your, um, for your purposes. Okay, um, now we are um, uh, I have finished our, our presentation and uh, the question and answer session uh, um, um, uh, starts now. So, and I hand, hand over back to Car Design Webinars uh, um, crew. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jan and Boris. That was a fascinating um, webinar. And um, the way you can tell if a webinar is of interest is the number of questions we've got. We've got a lot at the moment. We'll run through them now. But if any of you would like to continue by putting some questions to the guys, please fill in the box as requested. Um, the first question I've got is um, how many channels a, a power wall or a cave could have? Oh, there's actually no, no limitation. It's only the price you uh, uh, want to spend. So we, uh, for instance, we are, we are running a, a cave at Airbus, uh, Airbus in Hamburg. They are running a 16 channels cave, as so a five time five wall cave, and uh, with uh, in stereo mode. So 16 projectors are supporting this, 
and uh, um, so but you can use uh, um, more channels and more projectors and uh, uh, bigger clusters as you want so the software itself um, has no limit for that okay I've got a question from Daniel when elements of the model are switched between the various options ie wheels seats etc are these separate models within a library or handled differently well, basically what you are doing is to when, when you prepare the model, um, you are including all the geometry. Okay, sorry guys, can you speak up a bit or get close to the microphone? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, um, basically, when you are um, uh, when you are preparing the model, you are including all these uh, variants that you want to show in the presentation later on. You are including that into the scene, and then you are able to switch between these different uh, geometries. Okay. Brilliant. Um, we've got another question here from Opal, from Torsten from Opal. Uh, where will the annotations be saved within the CSB file? How can it be controlled if we want to open it the following day? Uh, you will find the, the 3D node, the uh, virtual uh, um, post it in your CSV file, yes, you can uh, open the dialog for such annotations and uh, activate and deactivate those. Um, so it's saved in the in the scene file. Um, there are other possibilities to save comments uh, um, on on the server, um, but for for that solution, you can uh, make use of uh, um, server-based uh, asset management systems like PictureBook, for instance, or uh, maybe Team Center. Um, so this could be another possibility. But what we have seen now is saved in the scene. In the uh, what we have seen in the demo. Okay, we've got another question from uh, Sibel from Damla. Can you measure between the midpoint of the circle? Um, I, su I suppose uh, that she may means the, the uh, park distance control sensor circle. Um, if so, um, then yes, it is possible to measure bet uh, between the midpoints of the circles. Thanks, brilliant. Uh, also, another question. It's, it's a brilliant, powerful tool. But what are its hardware requirements? Uh, hardware requirement is actually uh, um, so very important is the graphics card, of course. So uh, um, graphics card is uh, we recommend here the latest uh, NVIDIA Quattro 6000. Um, but um, regarding the operating system, um, you can run on Windows XP or Windows 7. Um, 32-bit, uh, what we actually recommend is 64-bit. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, operating system to handle uh, bigger data. Okay, I've got another question um, this is from Philippe. Is this software also usable for 3D model creation, material, resistance, stimulation, simulation, sorry? Uh, if I got the question correctly, so you do not create geometry, so it's not a modeling software, um, but if I, you also said something with materials, what you indeed can do, you can define materials, so it's a, there's a very powerful material editor where you, uh, which uh, allows to uh, define sophisticated materials, uh, there's an editor for that, and then these materials can be applied on several pieces of your uh, geometry. Okay. Um, also, I've got a question from Jörg from Ford. Is it possible to see on-fly light simulation? On-the-fly light simulation? Yes. Um, yeah, if it is about uh, um, importing uh, measured lights, um, we have uh, currently a prototype for that, um, um, supporting uh, import of uh, measured lights, um, but what uh, what we normally do is uh, to do uh, um, illumination by HDR surroundings. So this is uh, the case for illuminating by the environment. Um, for that, um, we can uh, we can make use of uh, such HDR images for image-based lighting. And uh, other light sources you can define with uh, the uh, uh, light sources like spotlight, direction light, and, uh, and point light, or you even can uh, can define any uh, object in your scene to be a light source with its geometry. Um, this is possible as well. Okay, brilliant. Uh, is it possible to use HDR monitors to achieve higher con contrast? 
Uh, very uh, good question, yeah. This is indeed uh, um, possible. Um, the currently, the normal uh, uh, monitors support uh, only 8-bit uh, color depth, but with uh, HDR monitors, with 16-bit uh, monitors, you can uh, plug in and there's no no um, uh, action by the user necessary. The, um, the software uh, on, it, on its own uh, detects the 16-bit HDR monitor and uh, outputs um, and gives, gives out uh, um, a proper uh, image with uh, much more contrast. So we have a very good experience with, with uh, connecting with using th these monitors. They are showing a very good images with a very high contrast. Okay. Another question. We've still got lots more to go through. Is it possible to access multiple databases or humans for the ergonomic analysis? Uh, yes, that's the case. I uh, said this uh, before that there are several databases for several regions worldwide. Uh, there are special measured um, databases, for instance, uh, North Europe, Mid Europe, South Europe, uh, Japan, Asia, uh, China. So for each region there are uh, um, certain separate databases of measured uh, humans um, you, can, uh, you can have access to and run your economic analysis. Okay. I have a question from uh, Philip again. Where can you get training on these tools? Training on these tools? Oh, yeah. Then I uh, can invite you to have a look at our, our website, um, rtt.he, uh, uh, and then uh, look out for for training opportunities. And uh, um, we are happy to uh, um, to give trainings here. Okay. Excellent. And we've got another question from Opal. How are the shadows calculated in this model? Um, well, in this model, the shadows are calculated using the uh, algorithms um, um, yeah. established in uh, Datagen 9.6 um, using a light map technology, so um, a global illumination algorithm. Okay. Question so, from normally me. We where, did where do Sorry. I've got a question about the environments. Where do they come from? Uh, we uh, um, deliver um, several uh, environments, about 20 um, of them with the software, so the users uh, um, can, they are ready to use and you can place your models in, and, uh, but there's also opportunity to uh, create your own surroundings and uh, make use of them. With the documentation, it's, uh, 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 there's uh, introduction, uh, instruction also, um, how to do that. So you can shot your own environments, make your HDR photographs and uh, make use of them, place your model into that environment. Okay, um, another question. What hardware is needed to run this kind of visualization? I think we've done that one. Oh, we had this already. Uh, uh, I can, uh, um, so actually, it's window, Windows based, and uh, uh, maybe we recommend the latest NVIDIA graphics card. And um, uh, maybe a good uh, um, good topic to to tell here is that uh, when you're running ray tracing, um, you can uh, you have the choice now, uh, now to run a CPU based or a GPU based ray tracing. We have very good performance figures. Uh, with uh, with the latest uh, um, graphics card, so the performance here for for ray tracing is very good. So there you have the choice here to make use of GPU or CPU. But actually, uh, um, as I said, we recommend also 64-bit um, operating systems uh, to handle such big data. And then there is no limit uh, um, for, um, for for or the, the limit of of number of polygons is only limited um, by the hardware. For instance, you can uh, put um, about 50 million or, or 100 uh, or more than 100 million polygons into the ray tracer for real-time visualization. Okay, we've got a question from Mark from RTT. Uh, could you describe the process by which the DR uh, Pro E files would get into VR with Ramis, assuming an automation? Dear is concerned about the time their VR will need to get ready for a review session. And uh, um, it's uh, actually quite easy. Um, we have an uh, importer of pro-engineer data. The importer can can uh, 
can be connected to Delta Chain. You in, inside Delta Chain, you open a, um, a poor engineer assembly. Another possibility could be to uh, do it with a batch uh, job. So with uh, the application Delta Batch, uh, you can uh, convert overnight uh, um, a huge amount of data uh, assemblies, poor engineer assemblies, and uh, with that. Um, scenario you even can make use of multi-core support so the uh, conversion and tessellation uh, um, of these native catch data um, is very fast. I have another question um, from uh, Steve, Steve Madge. Is it possible to view the vehicle in the showroom environment with artificial lighting and can you visualize polarization? Um, it is possible to create artificial lighting, for example, using the uh, HDR Light Studio plugin um, that Boris uh, mentioned during the presentation. Uh, what DeltaGen is not capable of visualizing is the polarization effect, which is a physical, quite uh, advanced thing, I think. Um, another question, have you implemented iRay as a rendering engine? No, in this, in this application it's not implemented, um, but this uh, is a very good uh, option in the future. Uh, we will have another um, application on the market uh, um, in the next time um, for very quick and easy image creation, and uh, um, for, for that solution we will, we will have an iWay renderer integrated. But, uh, um, this will this will okay. Okay, I've got an interesting question. I was impressed by the performance in tracking mode. What was the size in megabytes of this R8 model? Um, this R8 model is, if I remember right, about two or three gigabytes in the uh, in the scale mode for the, the um, immersive setup. Okay. Um, I think I've got a question. I'm going to read it differently than it's written. Uh, is there a Mac version of this? Uh, no, there's no Mac version, um, but we have indeed, um, so for the front end it's only running on Windows XP and Windows 7. Where we have flexibility on the operating system is for uh, clusters. If you want to um, increase your rendering performance and you're having your front end application running on a Windows, then in the back you can hook on a scale cluster supporting the render performance. This could be Windows or Linux. But on the front end, only Windows is a uh, supported operating system. OK, I have a question from Opal again. Uh, is the illumination for the exterior and interior done only based on surrounding? Um, the illumination in all three um, yeah, variants was uh, done by only one HDR and uh, this HDR serves as an IBL image based lighting and this was the only thing that was illuminating the, the scene in this case. That's right. Okay, another question. Can you light up elements on or in the car, e.g. lights, dashboard, lights, etc.? Yeah, you can, you can uh, define uh, any arbitrary object in your scene as a emitting light emitting object um, and then it's uh, uh, for, for uh, and then it's used as a light source and also uh, um, then the the effect is that it uh, uh, it casts shadows and it illuminates um, the uh, the neighbor parts um, in the model yes you can do that what I have to add there is uh, that this requires an advanced rendering algorithm called global illumination. Um, which we have not sh shown in this presentation, but which uh, requires a bit more uh, hardware resources. Okay, I think um, we've come to the end of the, the Q&A session. Uh, I'm, I can safely say that there's been a lot of questions asked today. So I, I thank um, uh, all of you for joining us today. The one will be uploaded into our archives and accessible in the future for all of your colleagues who have not been able to attend today. Um, you can access this and previous webinars under the Process tab on Car Design News homepage. Thanks again for joining us and uh, a special thanks for Jan and Boris 
and we hope you'll join us again for our next webinar. Goodbye. Thank you very much for listening and uh, goodbye.